This is called uniting the light and welcoming living creatures, responding to the needs of the individual. One of my disciples looked in the in the, the dictionary and found that in Chinese, to welcome living creatures means to help other people. However, it is not just to help them, it is to induce them to live suffering and obtain bliss. Lacking the idea of self or other, arrive directly at body, the unchanging true nature. Having helped one person, you cannot say, I have taken a big shoe across. How great is my merit? If one thinks like that, he hasn't just a dust mode of merit. He hasn't a dust mode of merit. Once you have done something, it should be forgotten. If you lead people to Buddhahood, you should not be attached to the merit gained from it. Therefore, the Diamond Sutra says, I must take all beings across to Nirvana, and yet not a single living being has been taken to Nirvana. You recite the Diamond Sutra from morning to night, but do not understand its meaning in the least. Look at me, you say, there is still me, and me comes before everything else. What Diamond Sutra do you recite anyway? The Diamond Sutra speaks of having no mark of self, no mark of pupil, of others, of living beings, or all alive, because all dharmas are empty appearances. Is there anything more wonderful? If you truly understand, you arrive directly at body, the unchanging true nature. This is called the refuge of proper knowledge and views. You have been liberated from knowledge, views, and attachments. No self, no other, contemplate, independence, no emptiness, no form. View, the one, come thus. Without the mark of self, just that is the bodhisattva, Avalokiteshvara, if you do not fall either into emptiness or existence, you can see the Buddha. Sutra, good knowing advisors, the incense of these refuges perfumes each of you within. Do not seek outside. I will now transmit to you the mockless repentance and reform to destroy the offensive actions done within the three pillars of time and to purify the three commas. Commentary. Repentance is to repent of past misdeeds and reform is to refrain from error in the future. If you receive it with a sincere mind, this repentance and reform can wipe away the offenses of the past and prevent them from being committed in the future. Purify your mind and the transmission will purify the karma of your body, mouth, and mind. Sutra, good knowing advisors, repeat after me. May this disciple be in past, present, and future thought, in every thought unstained by stupidity and confusion. It may be wiped away at once and never arise again. Commentary, defined by stupidity, turned by stupidity, you soon become quite stupid. It is most important in every thought not to go down the road of stupidity, but bring forth wisdom instead. Bad karma is created out of ignorance. Completely repent and reform of all offenses. Killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, greed, hatred, stupidity, filthy language, lying, harsh speech, and slander, and in an instant they will be wiped away. Do not commit offenses out of stupidity and confusion. Sutra, may this disciple be in past, present, and future thought, in every thought unstained by arrogance and deceit. Now I completely repent of and reform all bad actions done in the past out of arrogance and deceit and other such offenses. They may affect be wiped away at once, and may they never be perpetrated again. Commentary Arrogance Only knowing there is you, unaware that there are others, looking down on everything in the heavens and below, I alone am, am honored. Deceit is lying. It is also the self-deceit of thinking that you are indispensable, 
Number one in the entire world. I am the highest, the president, the king, the chairman cannot compare with me. Do not be stained by arrogance or turned by deceit. Sutra, may this disciple be in past, present, and future thought, in every thought unstained by jealousy. Now I completely repent of and reform all bad actions done in the past out of jealousy and other such offenses. May they be wiped away at once and never arise again. Commentary, jealousy is the very worst thing. Cultivators see someone who is more intelligent than they are and become jealous. They see someone who learns faster and become jealous. They see someone sitting first, thus unmoving and become jealous. They see someone eating more food and become jealous. They see someone sleeping more and become jealous. They see someone drinking more tea and become jealous, even to the point that when someone has been sick for a long time, they think, why can't I get sick too? It will not be divided or turned by jealousy. Sutra, good knowing advisors. The above has been the monkly's repentance and reform. What is repentance and what is reform? Repentance is to repent of past errors. To repent to so completely of all bad actions done in the past out of stupidity, confusion, arrogance, deceit, jealousy, and other such offenses that they never arise again. Reform is to refrain from such transgressions in the future, awakening and cutting off such offenses completely and never committing them again is called repentance and reform. Common pupils, stupid and confused, know only how to repent of former errors and do not know how to reform and refrain from transgression in the future because they do not reform. Their former errors are not wiped away and they will occur in their future. If former errors are not wiped away and transgressions are again committed, how can that be called repentance and reform? Good knowing advisors, as you have repented and reformed, I will now teach you to make the four all encompassing vows. I vow to take across the limitless living beings of my own mind. I vow to cut off the inexhaustible efficiency of my own mind. I vow to study the immeasurable Dharma draws of my own nature. I vow to realize the supreme Buddha way of my own nature. Good knowing advisors, did all of you not just say, I vow to take across the, limit, uh, the limitless living beings? What does it mean? You should remember that it is not Hui Neng who takes them across. Good knowing advisors, the living beings within your mind are deviant and confused thoughts, deceitful and false thoughts, unwholesome thoughts, jealous thoughts, vicious thoughts. All these thoughts are living beings. The self-nature of each one of them must take itself across. That is true crossing over. Commentary, you must vow to take across the beings within your own heart to cut off the, the afflictions and to study the Dharma doors. There is nothing higher than Buddhahood. Vow to realize it. Living beings are incalculably numerous. But you yourself must vow to save them, for he is not the sixth patriarch who takes them across. These good and bad living beings exist within your own mind. The good ones seek unsurpassed body and produce the body mind, while the bad ones must still be saved. Think it over and ask yourself, have I saved the living beings within my own mind? Am I proper in attitude and honorable in conduct? or am I jealous, obstructive, and otherwise ignorant. The living beings within the mind are limitless, but our first concerns are the deviant and confused living beings, which should be taken across by means of proper wisdom, the deceitful and false living beings, which should be taken across by means of humility and the unwholesome living beings, which should be taken across by means of Goodness, if you find that you have these forms, vow to correct them, for if you do not, 
they will bra drag you into the inescapable and endless misery of hell. Respect takes jealous living beings across. Although Buddhirushi was a Dharma master, he invited other Dharma masters and viciously tried to poison Bodhidharma. Such thoughts are living beings and you are making a serious mistake if you do not take them across. Sutra What is meant by the self-nature taking itself across? It is to take across by means of right views in the living beings of Devon views, affliction and delusion within your own mind. Once you have right views, use prana wisdom to destroy the living beings of delusion, confusion, and falsehood. Each one takes itself across, enlightenment takes confusion across, wisdom takes delusion across, goodness takes evil across. Such crossing over is a true crossing. Further, I vow to cut off the inexhaustible afflictions, that is to use the prana wisdom of your own self-nature to cast out the vain and false thoughts in your mind. Further, I vow to study the immeasurable Dharma doors. You must see your own nature and always practice the right Dharma, that is, true study. Further, I vow to realize the Supreme Buddha way and with a humble mind to always practice the true and the proper. Separate yourself from both confusion and enlightenment and always give rise to prana. When you cast out the true and the false, you see your nature and realize the Buddha way at the very moment it is spoken of. Always be mindful, cultivate the drama that possesses the power of this vow. Commentary, use prana wisdom to destroy the living beings of delusion, confusion, and falsehood. Beat them to death, you ask, but isn't that a violation of the precept against killing? Here you may violate the precept just a bit. You are indeed hard to teach. When you break the precepts, you don't worry about breaking them, but when you do not break precepts, you worry about breaking them. Transform the bad beings within your nature so that the good ones may dwell undisturbed and at peace. You may kill them, you may beat them to death. Such crossing over is true crossing over. Afflictions never end, but you must cut them off. Actually, cut off means change. Change your afflictions into body. Afflictions are actually body, and if you cut off all afflictions, you cut off body. If you cut off all afflictions, you would become a Buddha, and you don't want to do that just yet, do you? So leave just a hair's worth of afflictions and transform the rest into body. Use genuine prana wisdom to get rid of affliction and cast out all vain, false, deviant, and ignorant thoughts. Recognize your mind, see your original nature, and always practice the right drama, not the wrong. You must study the Buddha drama in detail, but if you do not practice it, it is not true study. True Buddhist studies include both study and practice. For example, people who used to smoke, drink, and take drugs no longer do so once they have studied the Buddha drama. They do not even eat meat. Those who were lazy and did nothing but sleep from morning to night and from night to morning now read and translate sutras, listen to lectures, and meditate vigorously without a thought of sleeping. If this were not true study, why would they choose to work so hard? All living beings can cross themselves over when no one needs to take them across. The four vows in the text above are the basic vows which all bodhisattvas should make. As to the humble mind, the Earth Star Sutra says, The Buddha told the Earth Star Bodhisattva, perhaps they are kings of countries in Jambuvipa, or noble men, great ministers, great elders, great kshatriyas, great brahmas, and the rest who encounter the tired, the poor, and those who are hunchbacked, crippled, dumb, mute, deaf, retarded, eyeless, as well as all others who are handicapped. 
Perhaps these kings and great men will wish to give and will, able, will be able to do so with great compassion, a humble heart, and a smile. Perhaps they will give personally with their own hands and or arrange for others to give, speaking gentle and sympathetic words. Such kings and others will obtain blessings comparable to the meritorious virtue they would gain by giving to Buddhas as numerous as the sand grains in 100 Ganges rivers, vow to realize the unsurpassed path. A 10,000-story building is built from the ground up. Once a person told an illogical tale. In New York, he said, the skyscrapers are not built from the ground up. They are built in empty space. They built the roof first. Everyone wrecked their brains and grew very upset, but no one could figure out how a building could be built in empty space. When I was in New York, I saw that the buildings were, in fact, built from the ground up. His story was nothing but a false rumor. Another person said, America is indeed beautiful. The American clouds are not like clouds in other countries. They are multicolored and entwined like gardens. The American moon is triangular and the American sun is square. <laughs> Do you believe this? To realize Buddhahood, one must begin from the ground up with a humble mind. Do not brag. Look at me. Practice the true and proper Dharma with a contrite heart and modest manner. Separate yourself from confusion and enlightenment. You say, separate oneself from confusion is all right. But how can one possibly separate oneself from enlightenment? This refers to Devon enlightenment, not right enlightenment. Those with Devon enlightenment are slow to understand the Buddha Dharma, but they don't need to be taught how to gamble or take drugs. They can do that on their own. You should keep away from such evil enlightenment. The text here does not say that you should avoid right enlightenment. You always give rise to prana. When you separate from Devon enlightenment, you give rise to wisdom, understanding, and right enlightenment, and constantly generate prana. When you cast out the true and the false, you see the Buddha nature and realize the Buddha way at the very moment of speaking of it. The truth that you cast aside is relative, not actual. Once read of the true and the false, the original truth such as nature is manifest. You cannot say that this nature is either true or false. Truth exists because there is falsehood and falsehood because there is truth. The true nature, however, is neither true nor false. The Sura Gama Sutra says, falseness itself manifests all truth. The false and true are both false. The great master Yung Cha, in his Song of Enlightenment, said, When truth is not postulated, falseness is basically empty. Existence and non-existence both re rejected. What is not empty, make empty. Real truth has no opposite. Always be mindful. Cultivate the drama that possesses the power of this vow. Having made these vows, you may practice. Cultivate them in every thought. Sutra, good knowing advisors, now that you have made the four all-encompassing vows, I will transmit the precepts of the triple refuge that has no mark. Good knowing advisors, take refuge with the enlightened. The honored, the doubly complete, take refuge with the right, the honored that is apart from desire. Take refuge with the pure, the honored among the multitudes. Commentary, take refuge with the Buddha, the Buddha is enlightened. Enlightenment is simply the Buddha, the Buddha is nothing but enlightenment. The Buddha is doubly complete because he has perfected both blessings and wisdom. Take refuge with the Dharma which is right and proper. Do not take refuge with Devon teachings, heavenly demons, or heterodox religions. 
take refuge with the genuine Buddha Dharma, which is the honored that is apart from desire. Everyone has a sexual desire and it actually kills people. Why don't we realize Buddhahood? It is because of desire, the and the greed, hate, and stupidity which accompany it. We study the Buddha Dharma in order to get rid of desire and cut off love. The absence of lust is the honor that is apart from desire. Take refuge with the Sangha. The Sangha is pure and its members are called pure fields of merit. True genuine cultivators should maintain the precept against handling money. Without money, you are pure. With money, you are dirty. Members of the Sangha who truly wish to cultivate, should stay away from money. On the other hand, without money, you cannot nourish the way, you cannot cultivate. Although you need money, you should not be attached to it and depend on its source. Thinking all day, who has several million in the bank, I'm going back from him. Then I can build a temple or a school or perhaps print an addition of the Chibitaka as a meritorious activity. That's just profit-seeking. While in Manchuria, there was a short period during which money and I parted company. I never touched money for a good reason. Living in the temple where I lived, when I left home, were 40 or 50 bishops, but sometimes as few as 10. When I, were, when I first arrived at the temple, the abbot was out begging and none of the bishops knew me. I know the abbot, I said, and they welcomed me. After leaving home, I practiced austerities, but not the ones you practice. You type, translate sutras, and meditate. But in a big rural temple where I lived, there was a lot of outside work to be done. Sweeping the courtyard alone took an hour. My first job was to clean the toilets, which weren't flush toilets but peak toilets, and every day the waste had to be removed because the cultivators did not want to smell the odor. They gave this work to me because I had just left home and had not yet cut off my attachment to smells. I did it every day and didn't mind too much. I got up at 2 in the morning and prepared a home for services. When I snowed, I swept and it snowed, I swept and the walkways so that I swept the walkways so that they were clear at four when everyone else got up. When the abbot returned and saw me, he said, So you have come. Yes, I said, I have. After I had formally left home, he called a meeting wishing to elect me as manager, a position second only to the abbot. When the abbot retires, the manager, manager becomes the new abbot. Everyone objected. He has just left home. They said, how can he possibly be manager? Very well, said the abbot. Let's go before the image of Waito Bodhisattva and draw names. Oddly enough, they do three times and my name came up each time. No one said a word because I had been elected by way told what he said by himself. Later, when the abbot wanted to make me an administrator, I said, All right, but I will not touch money. Other people must handle and count it. That's my condition. And unusual things happened when I held this precept. Whenever I went to the train station, I would sit and wait for someone who knew me to come and offer to buy me a ticket. If no one came, I just waited. But strangely enough, whenever I went to the station, someone came to buy me a ticket. If you don't handle money, you are pure. If you keep even one cent, you are unclean. Take refuge with the Sangha, which occupies the purest, highest, and most vulnerable position. The honored among the multitudes.
Sutra from this day forward, we call enlightenment our master and will never again take refuge with devon, demons, or outside religions. We constantly enlighten ourselves by means of the triple jewel of our own self-nature. Good knowing advisors, I exhort you all to take refuge with the triple jewel of your own nature, the Buddha, which is enlightenment, the Dharma, which is right, and the Sangha, which is pure. When your mind takes refuge with the enlightenment, devon confusion does not arise. Desire decreases so that you know contentment and are able to keep away from wealth and from the opposite sex that is called the honored, the doubly complete. When your own mind takes refuge with what is right, there are no devon views in any of your thoughts. Because there are no devon views, there is no self, other arrogance, greed, love, or attachment. That is called the honored that is apart from desire. When your mind takes refuge with the pure, your self-nature is not stained by attachment to any state of defilement, desire, or love. That is called the honored among the multitudes. Commentary To lessen desire, it is not enough to be a vegetarian and to read sutras. You must cut off all sexual desire. If one does not cast out thoughts of lust, one never will escape the dust. Unless you rid yourself of sexual desire, you will never get out of the triple world, the world of desire, the world of form, and the formless world. Contentment means not being greedy, dying of poverty, dying of starvation, no matter what the difficulty, you are never greedy. Separate from wealth and beauty, do you see how clearly it says that you should not covet wealth or the opposite sex or fame? That is to be doubly complete, perfect in blessings and wisdom. States of defilement here refers to all social and political situations. You should not be molded by the society, but rather transform it. Teach living beings, do not be touched by them. Once when I noticed that one of my, dis uh, my students had been talking on the phone for over an hour, I asked her what she was doing. I'm trying to convert my boyfriend to Buddhism. She said, really? I said, what is he now? He's a Catholic. She said, be careful, he doesn't convert you. I said his belief in Catholicism, Catholicism is firm. Take care that he doesn't take you across. Sure enough, long, not long afterward, she ran off. Now what she believes, whether she saved others or was saved by them is unknown. The non defilement of the self-nature is called the honored among the multitudes. Living beings are all defined. If you wish to be an exceptional individual, you must leave desire behind. To separate yourself from desire is to be a great hero and true student of the Buddha Dharma. Unless you correct your faults, what little Buddha Dharma you do know is useless. Sutra, if you cultivate this practice, you take refuge with yourself. Common people do not understand that, and so from morning to night, they take the triple refuge precepts. They say they take refuge with the Buddha, but where is the Buddha? If they cannot see the Buddha, how can they return to him? Their talk is absurd. Good knowing advisors, each of you is our mind yourselves. Do not make wrong use of the mind. The Avatam Sakha Sutra clearly states that you should take refuge with your own Buddha, not with some other Buddha. If you do not take refuge with the Buddha in yourself, there is no one you can rely on. Now that you are self-awakened, you should each take refuge with the triple jewel of your own mind. Within yourself, regulate your mind and nature. Outside yourself, respect others. That is to take refuge with yourself. Commentary. Ordinary people do not understand the principle of taking refuge. If you constantly say, I take refuge with the Buddha, 
just where is the Buddha? If you have never seen the Buddha, then how can you take refuge with him? If you say, I have seen him, you are lying. The sutra tells you to take refuge with your own Buddha, not with some other Buddha. The Buddha of your self-nature is always present, but you didn't know this because until now, you never had the instruction of a good knowing advisor. Now that you have taken refuge, you should be clear about the Buddha of your self-nature. Take refuge with the enlightenment. Take refuge with what is right. Take refuge with the pure. Take refuge with the enlightenment. And don't do stupid things. Take refuge with what is right. And don't do what is wrong. Take refuge with the pure. And don't do unclean things. Take refuge with the triple jewel within your own mind. If you really understand the Buddha drama, you will respect not just your relatives and friends, but everyone, even people you don't know. Instead of slapping someone when you see him and then throwing mud in his face, you must be the most respectful toward those who act the worst toward you. This is a fundamental responsibility of students of Buddhism. You say, you haven't really been bad to me. So how could I be bad to you? Isn't this extraordinary? It's just to take refuge with the triple jewel of your self-nature.